Yo, 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 it's your boy Felix and welcome back to another interesting episode on Top of FX and in today's episode I will be analyzing the PMB against the USDT. So without further ado, let's jump right into the market. Uh, one of them I'm giving it, I said the first thing I always do is, is to go to the high time frame in order to see the overall perspective of the market. Because in doing that, I'll be able to then um, deduce the, the direction of the market. And guys, you only see the market moving in three phases. Either the market is making higher highs or higher lows, which signifies an uptrend, or the market is making lower lows, lower highs, which signifies the downtrend, or the market is moving within the range. In this case, within this region, the market was consolidating, and we then expressed a sudden shift in the momentum of the market, which was a massive bullish move. So this was a high, a low, a higher high, higher than this high, and a low. And a high, so in this case it, we are in an uptrend because an uptrend is like a high, high, higher lows. And according to the principles of Elliott's wave, an uptrend of falls in the five wave pattern, where after the end of the five wave pattern, what to expect could there be a retracement or a reversal? A, ret a, ret a reversal will lead to the entire break of this structure. This would be a reversal. On the other hand, a retracement is just a a pullback in the market and the continuation of the uptrend but it won't lead to the break of the entire structure a reversal will, will mean that we signifies that um, this asset has already crashed so i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because of how uh, well known this crypto is so i'm going to treat the market as a retracement which is just a pullback in the market and the continuation of the uptrend so in this case we have a five wave pattern where it was the first wave second wave the third fourth and the fifth and at the end of the fifth wave is a retracement. So I mean, after this pullback, what to expect could be a continuation of the market. A retracement always happens in a three-wave pattern, where the, the first wave could either be a five-wave pattern or a three-wave pattern. The big wave is always a three-wave pattern, and the C wave is always a five-wave pattern. So the, if you observe the fractal of this C wave, I was able to count a five-wave pattern, where this was the first wave, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And at the end of the retracement, what to expect this will be a continuation of this uptrend. So already we could see that uh, we already have the first impulsive wave, which was the first wave, second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and a retracement. And what to expect that will be a continuation. And from analysis, this upward momentum will go as high as this level, which is 657. But what I just explained to you guys is the market structure point of view, but to understand what actually happened with this asset, one is to understand the psychology behind every move. I won't go into much details, but just to like give you just a brief summary of what's happening. So uh, what can happen is that you can see that this movement that up this movement here led to the break of this structure, which to say it took out the liquidity down here, and what happened? A mitigation towards this other block. Towards other block where the market is considered cheap. So, what comes next will be a continuation of this asset, and then the next area of high interest to institutional traders will be at this level. Why did I say this level? Because you have a lot of liquidity resting at this level, and this liquidity comes from as a result of institutional traders taking a heavy sell at this area with a stop loss being placed around this region, firstly. Secondly, you have traders that see this area as area of resistance and they hope to place a buy trade on the break of this structure. So a lot of traders already have that buy stuff placed around here with a stop loss around this region. Additionally to that, you have traders that see this as an area of resistance and they expect the market to gain a certain form of reversal around this area. So they have that stop loss placed with a sell stop loss around this region. So this whole contribution of stop loss contributes to what I call liquidity. So it, it, it comes, it turns into a pool of money what, and I call that liquidity. So um, to signify what I just explained, so you have a lot of money resting down here. And guess what guys, it's not that are always after this external form of liquidity. So they'll take out all this money resting down here. So you have internal liquidity resting here. They will clear all these guys out of the internal liquidity because you have stop loss placed around this region, around this region, and also all the guys with liquidity resting around this region towards this external area of liquidity. 
So the next move we should expect this market to go to to will be towards this area of um six five seven point two six. But what you explain to you is just the market structure um analysis. But when it comes to entry and having the best risk to reward ratio, and you have to go down to the lower time frame, like like the four hours time frame or the delay time frame, to know when is the right time to enter the, to place a buy trade on this asset. So is the first wave, second wave, the third wave, fourth wave. So the fifth wave. So if you want to take a buy trade, I can say I wait on the I wait for the market to go down to as low as this level. Now place a buy trade with my stop loss placed below this region, and my target level will be around this area. 657.26 so that is it guys so um if you like what i analyze don't forget to like comment and subscribe see you guys in the next episode thank you